to thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence this morning. Father, so many people have been are in the hospital. Some of them, their legs have been are hung in right in the hospital. They are hanging there and they want to be in your presence, but they are not able to be here today. They are not able to be in their churches today because they have one problem or the other. But you've been faithful to yours. You've been faithful to our family. You've been faithful to our loved ones. And we want to thank you for the life you've given this is another Easter you've made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in you that you've given us this beautiful, brilliant opportunity to be in your mighty presence. Continue to lay hold on us and give me all trance today as I share your word. Speak to somebody's life. Hear somebody, Lord, and minister to somebody in the name of Jesus. Let it your shout. Amen. Can we clap for great elevate? Elevate, God bless you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. God bless you. This morning, I want to quickly consider something the Lord has put in my heart. And I want to encourage you, if you can write, please write. I'm looking forward to teaching this message. Let me see how the Lord will lead me. I'm teaching on what the Bible, what, the, what the, I believe Holy Spirit has put in, in my heart, the revelation and resurrection of the Son of God. The, revel the revelation and the resurrection of the Son of God. My intention this morning is to be able to inculcate something. I don't want to get you excited. I want to make sure I inculcate something into your spirit. As a result, I'll be showing you the scriptures. And I want to encourage you to be ready to read the scripture. If you can write, please do write. Amen? Now, Jesus' resurrection from the dead was the crowning achievement that, that forever separates him from any other religious leader who has ever been or will ever be. His resurrection was um, the climax, the crowning of everything. You know somebody? It was the apogee of his coming. When you talk of if Jesus Christ had not resurrected, your faith would be in vain. So when we talk of his resurrection, we're talking of one of the biggest things that has ever happened to mankind. Hello, somebody. <coughs> you see, <coughs> the resurrection, the resurrection tells the world that the kingdom of God is ruled by a a living, sovereign God. Hello, somebody. The kingdom of God is ruled by a, a living, sovereign God. The founder of Jesus Christ, the only founder of a religion. Christianity is not even a religion. Christianity is a relationship. But Jesus Christ is only founder of a religion. A religion that the founder died and resurrected again. Hello, somebody. No other religion, Maharaj, or the founder of Hindu, did not, you know, come back to life. His grave is still there. Hello, somebody. If you're looking for him in his grave, you will see him. Mohammed did not come back to life. Hello, somebody. His grave is still lying there. Amen? Hello, somebody. If you doubt me, we can help you with ticket money to Saudi Arabia or somewhere. <laughs> and you will see where he's still lying. Hello, somebody. You know, Buddha did not rise to life. All these great religion leaders or religious leaders, none of them came back to life. It was only Jesus Christ that came back to life. Is that not amazing, somebody? Yeah. It was only him. In fact, he appeared into John the, ba in John the Beloved, an island of Patmos. Hello, somebody. After 60 years of his death, he appeared to him. If you look at the book of Revelation, chapter 1, reading from 17 to 18, you will discover when he appeared to John, he said to him, I'm the one that lives forevermore. Hello, somebody. I am the one that lives to eternity. I live forevermore. So Jesus is, is alive. It's not something a lot of people still argue. Is Jesus God? Did he really rise to life? Hello, somebody. Jesus, if he was a fake religious leader, um, everything about him would have diminished. Hello, somebody. But from time to time, from year to year, his glory, his fame continued to increase. 
how, how do you know that Jesus Christ is not a common person? It's because of, just look at your life. Hello, somebody. If you look at where you used to be in the past, some of us used to be in the backside of the desert. And he came there, pick us up, clean us, hello, take away a bottle of beer from our hand, take away our cigarette. Oh, you're not talking to me, somebody. <laughs> Hello, somebody. He take away some of those things that rule you. He just take it away. You know, the cigarette is just a leaf. I love cocaine is a leaf. Hello, somebody. This thing is controlling a lot of people. The ordinary leaf, you know, is controlling God's own creation. Hello, leaf. We are not made in the image of God. It was human beings. We are made in the image of God. But you that is made in the image of God is being controlled by alcohol. I'm not condemning you, but you know that it's not right. Hello. To be killing yourself every day, you get drunk and then, um, hello, somebody, your children have to carry you and put you on the bed. <laughs> and in the morning, they touch you if you're still alive. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Because ordinary life is controlling you. So, Jesus Christ died for you and you were made in the image of God. Say to somebody, I am made in the image of God. You look at the book of, of, of Romans chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible says his resurrection declared him to be the son of God. Why do we know that Jesus Christ indeed is the son of God? Romans, you know, and was established as the powerful son of God by what? By resurrection from the dead according to the spirit of holiness. Hello somebody. I want some cooperating church this morning. Okay, those who want to cooperate, may God bless you. Oh, somebody. It says, and was established as the powerful son of God. Hello? By his what? By the resurrection from the dead. So what actually established him to be the son of God is his resurrection power. It's because he resurrected. If Jesus Christ did not resurrect, he would be equal with every other religious leader. Hello, somebody. So his res resurrection marked him to be an extraordinary person. He's not just a man. Hello, somebody. He was sent by God to redeem you and to redeem me. So, resurrection, Easter time is very important, momentous moment, very important time in Christian history. Amen? Even though it's also some Eastern, Easter is a religious practice. Why? Because most people, they, they want to be holy during Easter time. Hello, during Easter time, some churches declare you know, 40 days fast or 20 days fast. Some of them stop drinking and stop eating meat and stop doing all those stuff. Stop hanging around with people. Hello, somebody that are not their wife. And soon after Easter is, am I talking to somebody's over? Hello, they go back to the same thing. So I said to my wife yesterday, that I said, I do Easter every Sunday. I'm talking to somebody right now. I do Easter every Sunday. Sometimes... I try to celebrate because the church have said it. It's part of the doctrine. We need to have a time of memorial, a time we remember stuff. But, it, but I don't attach too much importance to certain celebrations, hello, because every day is Easter. Hello, somebody. And I say, matter of, of fact, Easter is not actually meant for believers. Hello, somebody. Easter is meant for unbelievers. Hello. Once you are saved, You've come into the kingdom of his dear light. Easter is meant for people. He came to die for the sinners. And once you are saved, you are no longer in that category. I know some of you are not feeling that. What is he talking about here? So if you are saved, amen, you should, or during Easter time, your duty is to go there and say, look, Easter is for you. Come to the church. Come to the church. Come to the church. Amen? But some of us put in so much time buying clothes and buying stuff. During Easter time, hello, we, we, we just make it to be a bath satisfying our flesh, but it's actually about winning souls and bringing unbelievers to our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you've got to understand that this is one of the most important moments in our life when we look at it from a celebration point of view. But every day must be your Easter. Amen? You must never live as if you own this world. Never live because tomorrow is unknown. Amen, somebody? Now, we'll get into this message proper. Turn to the book of John chapter 10. John chapter 10, 17 to 18. John chapter 10. I'm going to show you something very important. This is why the Father lost me. Because I, I am laying down my life so I may take it up again. What is this word? Jesus says, the reason the Father loved me is because some scripture says, I laid down my life. It means he was not forced to lay down his life. Hello? He chose to lay down his life. He said, because of my obedience to go out, out for my God, 
to do his will. My father loved me because of that. Hello? Hello, somebody. Then keep going. Verse 8 say, 18 says, No one will take it from me. No one take it from me, but I lay it down on my own. And I have the right to lay it down. And I have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Glory to his name. Now, if you look at the scripture, a lot of people believe that Jesus Christ was forced to come and died for humanity. And so, so many people say God is a sadistic God or a sadist, a God who wants to cause people to go through pain, a blood mongering God or a, ball, a God who is hungry for blood through pain. And so many people wonder why if God wants to save the world, does he need to kill his son if Jesus is his son? And so many concluded that he was, Jesus Christ was forced to come. In fact, one theologian wrote, he said something. He said, Jesus Christ came, you know, for a mission, for an uncomplished mission, which he became a victim of his own mission. So in his thinking, he believed that Jesus Christ fell and lost somebody. But one, if God understand that Jesus Christ did not fail for the fact that you are sitting here today. For the fact that you are not where you used to be means that Jesus Christ actually succeeded. Now, when we look at this scripture, now we saw that it seemed to me there was a meeting in heaven. And God said, whom shall I send? And immediately the son said, I want to go, Father, just send me. Don't, don't, don't ask again. I will go. And Jesus Christ came. And I was asking myself, why did he come? He just came to redeem a sinner like me. Why? Hello, somebody. Because when you give your life to God, we used to say that we give our life to God. You don't actually give your life to God. You receive his life. Hello, somebody. Because when you meet him, there is nothing good about your life. There is nothing. Permit me to say, when we meet Jesus, before we meet him, we, we are living a useless life. Now, useless life meaning a life that is not actually useful. Hello, somebody. So when we, when we encountered him, we did not give him our life, but we receive his life. Say to somebody, you have received his life. Now, in other words, the life of God is in you. In him you live, in him you walk, and in him you have your being. Hello, somebody. But what made him came to give us his life? It's only four, you know, only sim the only simple reason, I mean, he came is because of four letters. Love. He lost somebody. For God so loved the world that he gave his word, only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not what perish, but we have eternal life, everlasting life. In other words, before you believe in him, you will actually perish. A lot of people say they are enjoying their life, they are enjoying their world, simple because, hello, somebody, they can buy drink, hello. They can go to club and dance their life out every weekend. Hello, somebody. They think they are enjoying their life. But actually, if you've not received Jesus Christ, you are living a perishing life. The only time life came into you was the day you received him. And one of the reasons he came is because of love. It was nothing but love. Because nobody called us him to come and redeem us. He chose to come. Now, a lot of people, if you look at the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, chapter 2, reading from 23, some people believe that the Father sent him, Acts 2, 23. I want to show you something. Though he was delivered, what's up? According to God's determined what plan and foreknowledge, you use, you, you use lawless people to nail him to the cross, to, to a cross and kill him. So people believe that he was delivered according to God's foreknowledge. Yes, he was delivered according to his foreknowledge. He was delivered by God's predetermined will. But it was based on Jesus' agreement. Hello? You cannot fully interpret this verse of the scripture and ask if you do not actually look at John chapter 10, verse 17 to 18. For you to be able to understand the meaning of the scripture, you need to uh, uh, co read it with in John 10, verse 17 and 18. So there was an agreement between the son and the father. And the son chose to come because he, he agreed to come. The father did not make him come. And when I look at the scripture, I say, oh, Lord, 
some of us is if people force you to do stuff, you will not last in it. Don't force your children to receive Jesus Christ. Pray that they will encounter Jesus all by themselves. Hello, somebody. Don't force your, your kids to marry a particular lady or, or man. Pray that they have a revelation. Because if you force people to get involved in certain relationship, it's not going to last. It will be a forced thing. Hello, somebody. And some of you are right now living in a forced relationship. You were coerced into it. You were persuaded to marry a particular man. Probably because your parents think if you marry this man, he's going to be visiting my home, their home with a loaf of bread every week. Oh, you're not, you're not in the spirit right now. And that's okay. This guy, you've got to marry him because he's rich. And so many people today that are in a forced job, you know, somebody forces you to take that job. Somebody forces you, you know, to take that course. You, know, you measured in certain things that you, you don't really want to measure in. I've seen people before, they started to be maybe a lawyer. And after, you know, four or five or six years, they dump it and start studying another thing. Because it wasn't actually what was in their heart. It's just that it was what was available at the time when they applied. But they know in their heart that it's not what they wanted to study. And they, they, they never had joy. They, were, they didn't have peace. Why going through that? Hello, somebody. After many years, they wait five to six years. And they started rerouting again, started looking for something else to study. You must never live a life that you were forced to live. Hello, somebody. Never allow God to give you revelation. Allow God, allow God to, uh, uh, to, to, to make you believe in what you believe. Don't even come to church because somebody makes you to come. Because if somebody makes you come, you're not going to last. Hello? You've got to have a revelation that, yes, God wants me to be here. God wants me to be there. So Jesus Christ was not false. Holy Ghost says to me, son, if Jesus Christ was false, hello, he would have given up at, at his first instance of challenge. Hello, somebody. Remember, uh, there was a time he said, Lord, if this, if this is your will, let it be done. He said, Lord, this cup is too heavy for me. I, I want to drink it, but if, the, if it is your will, then let it be. Hello, somebody. At that moment, if Jesus Christ was false, hello, somebody, to come and die, he would have given up. Because he was overwhelmed with pain, hello, somebody, overwhelmed with grief. He saw what he was going to, what, what he was going to go through. He saw it even before it happened. The reason Jesus Christ, you know, endured that pain, endured the cross, is because he made a decision, a law to come. A law somebody. He made a decision to come. And some of you made a decision to marry a certain person. It's your decision. Don't run away. Oh, you're not talking to me right now. It's your decision. A law. Anything before you make a decision in life, especially, do you know, if you're getting married, the person that you marry will determine 50% of your destiny, whether you like it or not. Lord, the person that is going to be your life partner, your spouse, determines 50% of the person you become. Even though God has given you destiny, you have a great destiny, but if you marry the wrong person, the person will alter your destiny if care is not taken. Hello, somebody. Therefore, when you're making decision, you must make a quality decision because your future is as good as your decision. <laughs> if you make a bad decision, the possibility that you will have a bad future is there. When I was coming to this country, I prayed and prayed, and I was afraid I don't want to go to a, I don't want to, I don't want to go to a wrong place. And one of my friends said, if you make wrong decision now, it will take you 10 years to retrace your step. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And a lot of people today have made wrong decisions. They are languishing in the decision they made many years ago. Jesus Christ did not give up because he knew what he was deciding for. So when the challenges came, he said, Father, take away this cup, but not my will. He said, I made this decision, but you know what your child is going to go through. If you can take it away, but no, not my will, God, don't, don't come close again. I think I decided for this. So you've got to understand that your decisions are important, and Jesus came because of the love he has for you. But before he came, he saw everything. And he played it like a movie. He saw what he was going to go through. Will you die for your friend when you know what you will go through? Not too many people will die for their friends if they know what they will go through. Hello, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, so as I read the scripture, that same verse of scripture, John chapter 10, reading from 17 to 18, I saw something. And Jesus said, I have power to take my life. He said, in the same way I give my life, I also have power to take it. Is there anybody here? Amen. And when I look at that, in fact, some people have said, some commentators have said, the reason he died is because he knows he's going to get back his life. <laughs> Hello, somebody. They say it's not a sacrifice because if you know that you're going to get what you're losing, you wouldn't mind to lose it. But um, if you also ask those people that are making those funny comment commentaries, Hello? if you ask them to die for you, even though they know they're going to get back their life, they will not die. You're not talking to me, somebody. So Jesus Christ said, I have power to lay down and I have power to take it. Wow. So when I saw the scripture in that verse 18 of John, I said, wow, glory to God. Amen. Because a savior that cannot actually rescue himself, that cannot take back his own life, cannot take your own life, cannot rescue you. So it's important that Jesus have power, hello, to what to take back his life. Hello, somebody. And then I said, how did he take it back? Because he was in the grave. Mm. He was crucified and was thrown into the grave. So how, 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 how was Jesus not able to take back his life? And the Lord showed me some scriptures, which some of you know, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Said so somebody, God is about to quicken you in the name of Jesus. I have power to take it back. Yeah. So when you look at the book of Romans chapter 8, reading from verse, no, 8 verse 11. The Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body, your flesh. He will quicken your flesh. So, and the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is actually called the spirit of Christ. Even though him here refers to God, but it also refers to Jesus. If you read Galatians chapter 4 verse 6, and Lord, you think about the spirit of the Son of God, you know, that which has been given to us. Galatians 4 verse 6. So the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead is the spirit of Jesus. Hello, somebody? And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of what? Of his son into our heart, crying, Abba, Father. So in, if you compare the scripture with Romans, Romans 8 verse uh, verse 11, it said the spirit of him. Hello? In Galatians, no, Galatians 4 verse 6, it called it the spirit of Jesus. So it was actually the spirit of Jesus that raised Jesus. Hello, somebody? So when Jesus Christ was crucified and thrown into the grave, hello, his spirit did not go to the grave. It is not possible for, the, in, for God to stay in a grave for even one moment. For each in one minute. So what went to the grave was his what? Hello, somebody. It was his what? His body. But God, let me show you something. Now, this is what happened. Before they throw Jesus to the grave. Hallelujah. Before they throw him to the grave. Now, this is the spirit. Hello, somebody. Hello. Before they finally throw him to the grave, the spirit walked out. Hello, somebody. So the spirit walked out. Hello, somebody. When the spirit walked out away from Jesus, they buried his body. Thank you, sir. When they buried his body, they were rejoicing that they have buried him. Dead say we got him. Grave say we got him. Am I thinking of somebody? Have you been in a time when your enemy is laughing at you? They, they thought they got you. You lost your business. You lost your backers. You lost your supporters. And they all rejoicing. Hello, somebody. But you are there laughing at them because you know you got a living God and it's about to quicken you in the name of Jesus. Why they are laughing at you? You are in the altar crying, Leba Shaka Payagadaga. And they told that the, 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 the last thing that happened to you is, is, is what is going to kill you. They told that you are gone. Why do we are rejoicing and discussing you in their bedroom? You are here con connecting with the Shekinah glory. You are connecting with his power. Connecting with the anointing. And all of a sudden you resurrect. <laughs> he resurrected. Hello somebody. Some of you have put your enemies to cry. I say you have put your enemies to tears. Am I talking to somebody? 
When they thought you're gone, you resurrect again. They thought you're gone, you resurrect again. I said, somebody's resurrecting. It's your time to resurrect. In this season, you are resurrecting. In the name of Jesus. So, when they buried Jesus Christ, they thought they got him dead, said to grave, we got him. Grave said to dead, we got him. But his spirit was laughing at them. Hello, somebody. Am I talking to somebody? So after three days, the spirit of God, it is not possible to hold him in the grave. It is not possible to hold God in the grave. The spirit did not go to grave. So after three days, the spirit of God went to the grave. I know somebody removed the stone oh, with the help of the angel. Am I talking to somebody? And he said, come out again. Come out again. I lost him. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus came out with a new party. He came out with a new party. Some of you are about to come out again. I said, you are about to come out again. The enemy is laughing, but you are coming out again. This is three days. At the third day. At the third day. We are in the third day. Hello, somebody. God, we visit some of you in this season. If you're here listening to me, you may have been in a grave right now. Spiritual grave, financial grave, marital grave. And everyone is laughing at you. They think you're not going to make it. But the spirit of God is going to hit your family in this season in the name of Jesus. Jesus resurrected by the power of the spirit. Remember, there are so many scriptures that say, and God resurrected him. But you've got to understand, Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. And they have the same spirit of Jesus is the spirit of God. So when Jesus says, I have power. If you go back to that girl in John chapter 1, in the 10 verse 17. When he says, I have power to take back my life. He knows what he was talking about. Because he knows it is impossible to bury the son of God. And the real son of God is not the body of the son. The real son of God is the spirit of the son. Jesus Christ was fully man and fully God while he was in the flesh. He lost somebody who was 100% God and he was 100% man. His human nature was man, but his spirit was not man. So nobody, the enemy can torment your body, but not your spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. They tormented the body of Job. They disgraced his body. They shamed his body. But they could not kill Job. Hello, somebody. Am I talking to somebody? Job said, I will see the Lord. And my eyes shall see the Lord. Because he's, he knew. God said to Job, to, to say, and say you, you can touch his body. But don't touch his spirit. Some of you here, your body has been afflicted. And you think you're dead. You're not dead. But the fact that you have cancer doesn't mean that you will die. Tell the enemy, look, this is just my body. You cannot capture my spirit in the name of Jesus. So we've got you understand that they are the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that is living in me. It is the same spirit that is living in you. We have one problem as Christians. We read the word, but we don't apply the word in times of challenges. 8 John, no, Romans 8 verse 11. It says, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead is indwelling you, is living in you, he that raised Christ, Lord, will also revitalize, revive, resuscitate your mortal body. And that's one of the reasons, even when you're sick, your body is broken. Your bones are broken. You can still believe God for healing. Hey, look, if the spirit of God is able to quicken the son, you think that the spirit of God cannot quicken you. It cannot quicken your finances. Quicken your marriage. It's just that we don't believe. Hello, somebody. You cannot do anything without believing. If you don't believe in a man, don't marry him. If you don't believe in a woman, don't marry him. If you don't believe in a ministry, don't even go there. Because you will never be blessed. It's a principle. You've got to believe. Hello. Some people can walk in in this church and grab their blessing and go. I was preaching in India 2009. And while I was ministering, a man that was operated, you know, by an American doctor, he, he said he had an accident and operated his brain or something like that. And since after them pain, you know what it is when you're going to, when you are having pain every day. He said he heard about our crusade in the radio. He, he, he drove about 11 hours to the crusade. And he came that day 
all the way from where he was coming from. And the power of God touched him. Instantly, he was healed right there in the crusade. And he testified. And after testifying, he went back that same day. And I asked my host, where is that man the next day? He said, the man has gone back the same day. He said he was operated by an American doctor, but he came to 11 hours and got healed. There may be people in that same locality that came to that crusade for three years, but nothing happened to them because they did not believe they came to see. Said to somebody, do you come to see or come to believe? <laughs> so you must make up your mind. If, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, hello somebody, if this same spirit lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead we also will also bring you, bring your mortal bodies to life Amen. through his spirit who lives in you. Amen. Bring your mortal bodies to life. So even if your mortal is dead, he can't move your hands, he can't move your legs, God can still revitalize you. Amen. It's not yet over until you win. You are in a journey, am I talking to somebody? But you are coming out victorious. Amen. Your name is Victor. In the name of Jesus. Because the same thing that lives in Jesus is living in you. I don't know if we really believe it. Am I really talking to somebody? If the spirit that is in him, that raised him, is in you. So how can we have this and we are fearful? Every day you are fearful of death. You're going to die. You're going to lose your children. And that's why you're losing them. You're losing your money. You're lo you, every day your husband is not home. You're crying. I don't know what he has done again. Hello, somebody. And if your fear creates your atmosphere. Hello, somebody. So you've got to believe that I, even if your family is not working, you've got to lay hold on the word of God. Keep believing and say, Father, I believe you in the name of Jesus. You are changing Michael. This spirit in me is in him. Let this spirit revitalize his mind, revitalize his thought, re revitalize his behavior. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because Michael is coming out from this pit of drunkenness. You keep on declaring, say, Lord, I believe you. You've got to understand that your, your tears does not move God if it, do, if it doesn't have, you know, a dimension of faith. Hello, somebody. If God, you know it, that your tears does A lot of people cry around the world. Even your children cry. Hello, somebody. When your ch kids are crying, I don't think that God comes from heaven to rescue them from crying. So crying doesn't make difference. What makes difference is your faith. Do you believe? Do you have faith? Hello, somebody. Mary be believed. He said, let your word perform what you've said. Do you know that the word of God knows how to perform? And it's performing in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus. Say so does somebody believe? It's a believing season for me. I say it's a believing season for me. It's a believing season for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, we serve a living God. Now, why did Jesus give his life to us? To be famous, to discover himself, to be God? Hello, somebody. Did he give him, did Jesus give, you know, give you his life because he wants to be famous in you? Hello? Is anybody here with me? Did Jesus give you, give him, give you his life because he wants to discover himself or because he wants to be God? Hello, somebody. You aren't talking to me. If you don't want to talk to me, go out the back chair. We give you back chair. Those who want to talk to me, come close. I like to talk to somebody. He didn't give. Please turn to the book of John 17. John 17, 45. John 17, 45. Why did Jesus give his life? Was well, Jesus Christ looking for glory? Because sometimes people do stuff because they have, they have intention. Hello? Some people give you something because they expect you to give them again. Some people, pastors invite you because they want you to invite them back. I said to my wife, I, enjoy, I, I just invite people to bless the house of the Lord. I, I'm not looking for a place to preach. They lost somebody. So people, people give you clothes because they want you to give them back. They invite you for dinner because someday they're expecting you to invite them back. They like your comment because they want you to like theirs in Facebook. Now people are, people are, are getting offended, even in Facebook. <laughs> because he didn't like their post. He didn't like their comment. They became offended. 
and lost somebody. He don't even know. You're not even thinking about that. They say, he's been seeing my coming. He doesn't even like it. So he doesn't like me too. I lost somebody. So people do stuff because they want something out of it. <clears throat> do you give because you want something? It's not about the respect. That's the positive expectation and negative expectation. I lost somebody. When I, give a t- when I give my time, I'm believing God to open the windows of heaven. Amen. That's what the Bible says. So I speak to the tithe. I speak to my giving in the house of the Lord. Father, I have given to you. Perform your word now. When the enemy devours your finance, you can say, Lord, I'm a tighter. Why must it happen? It should not happen. Because your word says, when I give, you will open the windows of heaven. You can challenge God. But when you do all, all, all little things, you give people, you know, food, invite them for dinner, and you expect them for three years for them to invite you. No, you don't do that. Hello, somebody. Do it because you want to do it. That is who you are. You live in love. You walk in love. The Bible says in him we live and walk and have our being. You, are, you now have the DNA of Jesus. And when he came, the Bible says he came not because he's looking for glory, because he already had glory in heaven. What's that word? Shall we read it? Verse 43. The Bible says, I have glorified you on the earth. <clears throat> Hallelujah. By completing the work you gave me to do. Oh, <laughs> can anybody say that? <laughs> Jesus, before he was, he was taken, he said, Lord, I have glorified you. How did Jesus glorify him? Is by what completing what God handed over to him. Hello. Some of you, you start things, you don't complete it. When you complete stuff, you are actually bringing glory to God. You start this business, you start that business, you dump it, you, start, you dump it, you have one girlfriend, you dump it, on another one, you dump. Oh, come on, somebody. Say to somebody, stop testing, stop testing around. You've got to stick with something. Oh, some of you are, are very, you are, you are spiritual right now, but, but I'm just saying the real truth, and, and you don't want to talk about it. Hello, somebody. He said, I have glorified you on the earth by completing the work you give me. You will complete your work. I say you will complete your work in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then verse 18, look at what it says. And that is my emphasis. Verse 18. Shall we all read together? As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Is this John 5? 17 verse 5. I'm looking at 17 verse 5. Say, now, Father, glorify me. Watch this. Glorify me in you, in your presence. With that glory I had with you before the world existed. Hello, watch, watch this. He said, with the glory I had with you before the creation of the world. In other words, before Jesus came, he already had glory. He didn't come because he was looking for some addition. He was already God. He was full. Hello? He was complete. So he didn't come because he was look, looking for God or seeking for God and savor or for fame. He had everything. In glory. When you talk of glory, you're talking of presence. Actually, even, even glory also talks of money. Because if you look at the book, the first place glory appeared in the Bible is in Genesis. When the, when the sons of Laban say, Joseph. Hello, has taken all the glory that belongs, no, J- Jacob has taken all the glory that belongs to our father. <clears throat> so when the Bible talks of glory, it talks of presence, it talks of power, it talks of God, it, t- it talks of savor. In other words, Jesus had all these things in eternity before he came. Oh, you're not talking to me, somebody. So he did not come for anything. That's why the book of Philippians 2, reading from 6 to about 10. He said he was in the same likeness you know, with the father, like the father. He was like the father. Hello, Philippians 2, 6. Hello, he was like the father. He said, but he, he, who, exist, who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Even though he was like the father. But he refused hello, to glory in those qualities. He came in the form of man to die for you. So Jesus did not come for fame, did not come for addition, did not come to discover himself more or to get to know who he, who, who, who he was. He already knew who, who he was in eternity. 
a lot. But why did he come? I'm going to show you. Very important scripture. First Corinthians. Probably, I think, 5. 5, 16. Why did Jesus come? Oh, Rabando Kosi Krabra. Lendro Boko. First Corinthians 5. Sorry, Second Corinthians 5, 15. Second Corinthians 5, 5, 15. Hallelujah. Are you there? Shall we read together? Everybody help me read. And he died for all. For who? For both the attached, the Lord, the unbelievers, the Guru Maharaj. He died for them. For the sinner and for the righteous. He died what? Well, for all. Jesus did not just die for your church alone. Because oftentimes we believe that he just died for our church. So if you're coming from another church, you're a devil. Hello, somebody. He died for all. Say to somebody, all is all. Hello. What is so that what shall we do? So that those who live should no longer live for themselves. That is why this simple scripture, hello, you know, it shows us why he came. This is the climax of why he came. But for the one who died for them and was raised, he died for all, so that you don't live for you. Somebody always say everything belongs to the Father. Your car, your money, your children, your position. Some of you know that your little position is pulling your head because you think it's for you. Hello, somebody? Ye ye just yesterday we made a manager and, and we can hear. But some people have been manager in their company for two, 10 years ago and they're still co-headed. They're coming to church. They're still cleaning the church. They're still praying. They're still interceding. But now, yesterday you were made a manager. We don't see you in the church again. And you told us all to pray for you, that you need a new position. You want God to promote you, and we keep praying for you. And you got that job, you and come in the church. Oh, you're not even talking to me, somebody. But the church prayed for you. I've seen people in this church. I prayed and prayed and knocked my head on the floor. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Every day they come with the same problem. That's a lady, she came, she stayed for over one year. She didn't have a job. Every day she was crying. And I, t I took it as a challenge. We're having 21 days prayer, fasting. Every day we bring her out and ask people, pray, I need that job to come, Lord. I just need some rest. And we prayed. On the 18th day of the fasting, she got a job. And she came to my house. She bring, when she signed the document, she said, this is the job. I got the job. You pray that the, the job came. I came to tell you, to show you the document. I said, okay, please remember God is giving you a job. Remember him. But soon after that job, we didn't see her again. <laughs> it lost somebody. And some of us have that kind of DNA. God needs to flush it out in this Sunday of resurrection. He's about to flush it out. You got it. You got what you're looking for. We believe God for you. We prayed for you. We agreed with you. Now you got it. We don't see you again. Hello, somebody. When you walk past us, that is how you walk. Hello, somebody. Oh, you don't even talk to me. Hello. Hey, yeah, man, Pastor. How are you? How is the church, folks? Hello. And I'm just saying, Lord, but I prayed for him. <laughs> He's not thinking of me anymore. Hello, somebody. And so he came and he died for all. So that those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for the one who died for them and was raised again. This is what Ishtar is all about. Hello, somebody. This is what Ishtar is all about. It's living for who? For Jesus. Say to somebody, give him all the glory. Easter is living. Easter is not about eating rice. It's not about gathering together and drinking. It's not about inviting people to dinner. You know, only. But it's about surrendering your life. Sharing your life with people. You know, don't be selfish. Yesterday before my kids went to bed, I called them and we read, I read them a scripture from the book of Philippians. Chapter 2. I think we read verse 3 and 4 or so. And after reading, I say, explain. And they all explain to me. One of them said, oh, the scripture says we should not be selfish. You know? We should not look for only our interest. And the problem of the church is that we are selfish. You don't listen to other people's cry. As long as it's not going to help you, it's not working for you, you don't care. You, you have the money and somebody is crying. Certain money, when you loan to people, you don't even ask. You know that money is going. 
a lot somebody, you just loan it, just, just, you, the person will be talking, I'm going to bring it, but in your heart, you know that, the, I know you're not going to give me back, I'm just giving it to the Lord, just eat it, <laughs> hello somebody. There's a lady that was crying so hard some, about last year, and she, she, was, she was in need of help, and, and um, they were saying, the church can't even help us, and it's not that she's been in church for too long, she just came for about a month, or three months, was having a visa problem, and um, when I heard it, I said, but she didn't even tell me what the problem was. And we didn't have finances as we, sh you know. But I said, I've got to help her. I will not wait until we have it all. So I called her. I gave her some amount of money. I said, this money is from the church. We are lending it to you. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I said, no, I called her. I said, we're going to send you money. Because she was not coming at that time. So we're going to send you money, but we are lending it to you. She said, no problem. We're gonna, I'm going to pay back. She got that money. She never called me back. <laughs> Hello, somebody. She didn't come in. We waited, we waited. We wanted to know if that money you know, got into the right account. We, we test and said, did you get the money? No reply. Hello, somebody. So there are people, but in my heart, I just say we are lending you. But in my heart, I know the money is all gone. Certain things, you've got to release it. Because that is why you are living. The church is there to help. Hello, somebody. If we are, if you're saying until we have all the money, we, we help people every day in our own little way. There's a man we pay in Africa right now. Every month we pay him. He's a pastor in the rural area. We pay him. <laughs> because I don't, I don't think we got to be, you know, all we do is to pay rent and pay light and gather together and clap a hand. Every Sunday we repeat the same thing. Church is about imparting life. That man have four children and don't have anything. Pastor in the rural area, if they get, you know, $5 Sunday is God. So when I was told of his situation, and he's a real man of God, I called him. I said, man of God, did I call him? I said to him, this has been in my heart, but right now it came on me heavily. I said, man of God, are you praying? He said, right now I'm, I'm, I'm on my knee. I said, but I saw the numbers international pick. I said, what are you praying? He said, I'm asking God to release finance. I said, the Lord, I said, Lord put it into my heart. It's been there that we, from now on we'll be paying you monthly. And we haven't failed since we started. That is what the church is all about. If your life is about walk and eat, then you miss it. This is why he came. Live for him. How do you live for him? How do you live for him? You live for him by imparting life. Oh, Kalaba Shadada. I just said, lady, I forwarded it to you for members yesterday. She's in Kenya. Suzanne Mboya. Suzanne Mboya is in the last 10 years, she have, have raised about $25 million. Same thing, she'll take gears, she'll go to schools. she say, I need the best girls, the, the, the ones that are doing well academically. So, and they will say, can recommend her, you know, girls in the school. And she will take them, you know, do their visa, send them to America. Hello. She's been doing that for 20, for 10 years. And they, as of the time I know, they have trained about 350 girls. And she said they have spent about, in 10 years, they have spent about $25 million. But she said she started with three people. You know, and she said she didn't even know what she was doing. She just started it because her father did it many years ago. And they shot the father during the days when Africa was, you know, fighting for their independence. If, you know, the father was a human rights activist. In fact, the father have, have shared in a platform with Martin Luther, Gino King. So they shot that man when he wanted to challenge the, um, the ruling party at the time in the Jimu Konyata. He was in the cabinet, but he moved on from his own party and went to challenge to be a president. And they killed him. In fact, it, uh, I let you discover the, the father was the one that sent Barack Obama to U.S. to school. His program is called A Lift. He sent him to, he, he was the one who, through that, his program, he sent Barack Obama to school. Barack Obama's father. Hello. And so after 50 years, this lady, the father died when she don't, don't, she don't even know her father. She, she restarted this program and called it Awadi Africa. Hello. So every year, they send. 30 to 40 people, girls from all walks of life, not from her own family, train them, and many of them are back. Some of them are working in that organization. Uh, I learned that one, one of them just started a school in one rural community just to help them. She said she thought they're going to get the education and run away, but they are coming back and doing something and giving back to the people of Kenya. And somebody who interviewed Jeff Konenja, or who interviewed her, said to her, Susan, he said, anytime you run for any office in this country, I'm going to vote for you. Suzanne said, they were interviewing about three of the girls that came back. Some of them have their master's, their PhD. Anyone who wants to have PhD, she's ready to train them. But she take them, you know, pay for their first degree, their second degree. 
a lot of what, to any level, she trains them. She said, no, I'm not going to contest. These are the ones you will vote for. And the, and the guy asked him and said, Ten, you know, 30 years from now, where do you see Kenya? She said, I have amazing hope. Kenya is going to change. She said, these are the futures of Kenya. <laughs> Training about 350 people in 10 years. Some of them have their PhD. Come back to the continent knowing that they were recipients of love. You think they will not change the, uh, the continent. For me, I said to my wife, you said, I said, any day I see Susan and boy, I'm going to need her. Say, you are my hero. I'm going to need that to greet her. I've been so challenged. I forward it to two of our people here. I say, this is where you're going. Think of something like this. You and he died. Shall we all read together? And he died for all. So that those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for the one who died for them and was raised again. Who is the one who died for you, church? Please, somebody help me. Who is the one who died for you? It's Jesus, the Son of God. About to conclude, I'm almost done. About to conclude. Hello, somebody. I'm going to just jump some few things right now. Once you receive Jesus, you receive life. Because life resides with Jesus. He is the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. Once you receive Jesus... You receive life. Say to neighbor, don't sleep. Because if some of us leave, you know where we are going. You know, it just helped me somebody. Hello? If some of us leave the church, you know, we're going to visit our Facebook. Hello? And sometimes it takes us one hour. So stay tuned. Tell somebody to stay connected. Spend this time in the presence of God. Now, when you receive Jesus, you receive what? Life. Say to somebody, you have life. The book of John 10.10 10, 10, say he came. The devil came to steal, to, to destroy, and to kill. But he came to give life. Life in abundance. Am I right about it? In John 4.6, the Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one coming to the Father except what? Through him. Muhammad is not the way. Sorry about it. Hindu is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Maharaj. Hello? Hello, somebody. Buddha is not the way. Hindu is not the way. Maharaj is not the way. The Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, not even your ancestors, no one came to the Father except through him. Hello? Hello, somebody? There's a scripture I love so much. I want to show you, please. Acts chapter 4, verse 2. I love this scripture. I, got, I learned the scripture when I got born again. There is, there is salvation in no one else. A lot, truth is not re relative. We have only one truth. Can we read together, church? Help me. There is, there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Now, Oprah have told some of you that, um, you know, you've got to go. He, she come, she don't believe that, that other people will go to hell. She believes that it all depends on how you know the truth. But your Bible says there is no name, no name under heaven. I don't care how you pretend. It may be a moralist. You know, you may be doing good, but if you do good, doesn't mean you're going to make heaven. First, what qualifies you to make heaven is to receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and your personal Savior. So when you receive him as your Lord, now he will declare you to be his son or daughter. Hello, somebody. So, even if you do good, you give arm. If you're not saved, you are not saved. And if you die, you're going to make heaven, hell. Okay? You're going to go to hell. So, you must never be deceived. Once you don't believe scriptures such as this, you are in trouble. Hello? Some of you are confused. Say, how will Buddha, Buddha, Buddhist people go to hell? How will um, uh, Hindu people, you walk with a Hindu person that is so nice and she give a good arm. And you say, no, how? she's a good person. How can she go to hell? Because she doesn't know Jesus. But the Bible is the document of heaven. Yeah. It's the constitution of heaven. And what did the constitu constitution say? If you go to the court of law, the judge will judge you by the constitution of the country. Hello, somebody. And if you do anything against the Constitution, you'll be in prison. So the Bible is what? A heavenly document. And it's given to you to obey. Hello, somebody. 
And so if you're not saved, today is the day you must be saved. In fact, God raised him from the dead never to see decay. I share this, I'm, I will don't, I'll be done with this. When God raised him, he raised him not to see decay. Amen? That was in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 34. Acts 13, 34. The Bible says, in fact, God raised him from the dead never to see what? Decay. As he has said, I will give you the holy and sure blessing I promised to David. Are you here, people of God? I want to make important, you know, I want to make sense here right now. He raised him not to see what? Decay. Not to see corruption. So, and the Holy Spirit said to me, in the same way God raised Jesus not to see corruption, you were also raised. Even before you die, you have been raised. It's not, remember, it's not for Jesus. It's for you. It's for unbelievers. Jesus did not come to die just to show himself. Everything that was written in the, in the past was written for your learning and for your understanding so that you will have hope from the encouragement of the scripture. Hello? I want us to read this scripture again. Don't miss what I'm about to say before I close. Very important. The Bible says, since he raised him from the dead, never what? To return to decay. Oh, hallelujah. Never to return to decay. He has spoken in this way. I will grant you the faithful covenant blessing made to David. When he raised him, he says, son, from now on, your body will never see decay. It will never see corruption. Now, the Bible says in the book of Romans 6, 4, that when we, when, that's why we do a mention baptism. When you are baptized, it is called dying with Jesus. And what? When we put you in the water, the law, that's what many people believe in the mention and not sprinkling. When you put you in the water, what, what happened? You died with him. Your sin died with him. Then when you come back, you rise with him. So even now, what the Lord showed me, so even now, you have not died physically, but God has already delivered you from decay. Amen. This is why somebody can have cancer and you speak and say, in Jesus' name, cancer die in her sins or his cells. And the cancer will disappear. Because prophetically, 2,000 years ago, the day Jesus Christ was raised, you were also raised. Hello, somebody. So you cannot see decay anymore. Your financing cannot see decay anymore. This is one of the reasons Paul, he was so eschatologically, eschatologically minded in the book of Ephesians 2 verse 6. So he said, we, not, we live in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Can you imagine that you live here in New Zealand where somebody says you're living in the White House? Hello, somebody. Though you live in New Zealand, but spiritually, somebody said, no, I have, he said, no, but I'm in New Zealand. That is how it, it, it works. If you're born again, you baptized, and you came out from the water, spiritually, your sense, you know, is gone. Hello, somebody. You now, God rescues you from decay. Rescue your soul from decay. And now sits you in the what? Heavenly places. Somebody shout, yeah. He, shall we, he also raised us up with what him and seated us up with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now this scripture is not talking about when you die. Hello somebody. I'm almost done. Please I wanted to stay connected. It's not talking about when you leave this world. Even now you sit in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. This is one of the reasons he had power to command. Hello somebody. This is one of the reasons you can co command demons to leave. Yeah. You can command poverty. Say poverty. You know, the same anointing that cast away demon, you know, can cast away poverty. Poverty is a garment. A lost somebody. Oh, la kapa And the Bible says, in this mountain, the God will remove that shelf, that covering, that veil that covers you. In this mountain, the mountain is the church. The mountain is the altar. So you've got to understand that even though you live here on earth, you are not living on earth. Though you walk in this earth, you live in this earth, but you are not of this earth. Hello? You are in the heavenly with Christ Jesus. And that is where you belong. Say to your neighbor, that is where you belong. Say neighbor, that is where you belong. In the name of Jesus. 
So you've got to understand that you walk in victory, you live in victory, you have victory. <coughs> we see, even if you're fighting a battle as a child of God, you've got to see the battle won even before you get there. Hello? Anytime you're fighting battle, you don't fight from a defeated perspective. <laughs> you don't fight from a defeated point of view. As a child of God, even when the battle is too hard, you've got to keep believing because you know you are not flowing from this earth. Some friends will tell you, you know, you're finished. You're not coming out from this, but you're laughing. He said, I know who I believe. Hello, somebody. I trust in him. I believe in him. You keep confessing. The more you confess, the more you create an atmosphere. The more you confess, the more you create an atmosphere. So you've got to know, I am, I'm done with that. Jesus came to bless you. Hello, somebody. Say to your neighbor, he came to bless me. Hallelujah. The Bible said, when he was raised up, when he was raised up, his servant. When God raised up his servant, Jesus, he sent him first to, to you people of Israel to bless you. Hello? By turning each of you back from your sinful ways. Acts 3 verse 6. 3 verse 36. When he was raised up, he sent his son to bless you. Hello? So as you live here today, you know what? You are going with blessing. Because why was he raised up? Say, neighbor, why was he raised up? He was raised up to bless you. Are you able to read with me? Acts, Acts chapter 6, 36. When he was raised up, he sent his son to bless you. That scripture took of past tense and present tense. As of apostles. So he was not raised up to curse you. He was not raised up to destroy you. His reason for coming is to bless you. In other words, today is actually a day of blessing. Hello, somebody. Because according to us, when he was raised up, he was raised to bless me. Oh, I feel excited. When he was raised up, he was raised to bless me. When he was raised up, he was raised to bless me. That was one of them. When he came and saw Peter, Peter had already denied him. Hello, somebody. He preached and went fishing. He helped Peter to catch the fish. He said, Peter, you want fish? I'm going to give it to you. He gave Peter all the fish he needed. If that is what he wants. He said, now follow me, Peter. Hello, somebody. Here is the Peter. I made you the leader of this association. The leader of this band. And you are gone with them. Because immediately Peter said, I'm going fishing. Many of them joined him. Hello, somebody. What you do is what your children will do. So, but he came, instead of condemning Peter, he blessed him. He gave him fish and he restored him and restored him. He didn't say, Peter, you're gone. You are out from a barn. You just disappointed me. Of, of, of all that I went through, you just disappointed me. He restored him because his mission is to bless. I lost somebody. We serve a living God. Say to yourself, I serve a living God. This is why the gospel is not a gospel of condemnation. The gospel is not a gospel of condemnation. I saw a pastor that was naked in Kenya, in online, and I wanted to know why do they naked him. They said the man used to preach and condemn everybody, but he made a mistake because he's not God. Hello. And they said, you are the one that condemns people. And you did this. And they naked him and they were beating him in the street. So when I read more, they said, because he condemns people. Gospel ought not to be a gospel of condemnation. We must always preach a positive gospel and give people hope. Why did Jesus come, people? Hello, somebody. Why did he come? Us, three, thirty-six. Why did he come? Why did he come? He came to bless men. So when you leave this house this morning, say this Resurrection Sunday, if things is not working for you, if your marriage is not working, your life is not working, some people have already knocked, knocked down. No, you know, they have shut down. They, nothing is working again. It's like they are living dead. They don't think it's, you know what? But even if you have written yourself off, when you leave this auditorium this morning, say to yourself, today is a Resurrection Sunday. And Lord, you've come to bless me. I'm going to be blessed. And I'm blessed. Hello, somebody. You say, Lord, you've come to bless me. And I'm blessed. 
Say to your neighbor, I am blessed. That is why he came. That is why he came. Even though nothing is working for you, today is a day of blessing. This, today is a day of blessing. This moment is a moment of blessing. As you live here today, may the word work for you. I say, may the word work for you. May his grace visit you. May his power discover you. May the glory of God be shown to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, things that is driving you, you will not be driving them. I said, things that is driving you, you will not be driving them. It's your time to win the thing that is willing you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody stand up, let's give him praise. Lord, we bless your name. Just begin to give him praise. When he was raised up, he was raised to bless us. Hallelujah. When he was raised up, he was raised to bless us. Lord, I bless your name. You were not raised to condemn me. You were raised that I may have life and have it in abundance. You were raised to restore my family. You were raised to restore my marriage. You were raised to restore my children. You were raised to restore my business. You were, you, you were not raised to destroy me. Lord, I lay hold on your words. Father, we want to bless you. Begin to bless him. Somebody begin to bless him. Kalabosha. Somebody bless him. Bless him. He's your God. In the same way he was raised not to decay again. The Lord has raised you so that you will not decay in that pain again. You are coming out from that pit. I don't know what your problem is, but I say you're coming out. In the name of Jesus, somebody just bless him. Bless his name. Higher bubbles. Lord, we bless your name. You were raised to bless me. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Begin to praise this God. What a great God. What a wonderful God. What a powerful God. Oh, we serve a God that never fell. We serve a God that never we fell. His name is yes and amen. He is a living God. He lives forevermore. He's living in your pain. He's living in your academic endeavor. He's living in your financial luck. He's alive right now, even in your pocket. He's restoring everything. Everything the enemy has stolen, he is restoring them. Somebody bless his name. This is your moment. It's a great day. It's a wonderful day. Lord, we worship you. Somebody just touch him. Touch him. Touch his wounded hand. Touch his bleeding feet. As, you, as his blood flow to you, your wounds will be healed. <laughs> touch the blood of Jesus. He's real. He's a living Savior. He's a living Messiah. He's not dead. He's alive. Lord, you are alive. Lord, you are alive. We declare you, Lord. We declare you, see Jehovah. We declare you, Savior. We declare you, our Messiah. Messiah in all circumstances. Messiah in all pain. Messiah, Lord, we praise your name. We know you live forevermore. Somebody take time and celebrate your God. Take time and celebrate your Jehovah. You are coming out from that pit. You are coming out from that pain. You are coming out from that destruction. And you are coming out from that destruction. Destruction is not your portion. I said destruction is not your passion in the name of Jesus. I see you jump out from that pit. God by your treaty. Hey, you have also. Thank him. Thank him. Remind him of his word. Remind him of his word. When he was sent, he was sent to bless you. When he resurrected, 
He resurrected to bless your family. Yes, that is the God you serve. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. We serve a living God. Lord, we serve a living God. Stripe away our shame. Remove every shame garment. Every spirit of shame. Every garment of shame that the enemy has cast on you. Remove it this Sunday. You have just resurrected. Every shame. Every shame. Receive fire. Spirit of shame. Receive fire. Garment of shame. Receive fire. Every sickness receive fire. He was not raised to shame you. I just feel we pray against spirit of shame. Pray against forces of shame. God was not raised to shame you. The son was not raised to shame you. He was raised to restore you. He was raised to give you abundant life. He was raised to cleanse you. He was raised to build you. He was raised to mold you together. That is why he was raised. Somebody cry. You are not going back broken. You are not going back defeated. You are not going back like somebody without hope. You are going back in his hope. Going back in his power. Going back with assurance. That is a restoration coming to somebody. Oh, glory to God. That is a restoration that is coming. That is a restoration that is coming. Father, we bless your name. Somebody's been restored. Somebody's been restored. I feel that somebody that's been crying out for finances. You've been crying out. You are in my left hand side. You are a man. You've been crying out. You've been crying out. If that finance did not come, you will face the biggest problem of your life. The Lord said, I'm giving you finances. I'm giving you finances. I'm giving you finances. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. The glory that is to do to your name. Receive the glory. Receive the praise. Receive it, O oh Lord. Oh, somebody please confess after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for dying for me. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your blood. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. By faith. by faith from now on, from now on I, take I take back my life I take back my destiny I, take back my destiny. I want you to confess right now with all your heart that is power in confession as he, as he hear you say so shall he do unto you keep going say from now on I take back my life I take back my family I take back my star I take back my grace I take back my glory in the name of Jesus Everything that has clouded my life, I use the blood of Jesus. I wash it away. Every shame, mark of shame, I cancel your power over my life. In the name of Jesus, mark of death, I cancel your life and your power over my life. In the name of Jesus, right now, I remove the mark of shame. The mark of disgrace, the mark of decay, get out from me. In the name of Jesus, I receive the power of God, the favor of God, the anointing of God, and everything God has ordained for me. I have become by the power of restoration. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed in Him. Through the power of resurrection. In the name of Jesus, I break barriers. I break barriers. In the name of Jesus, every embargo over my life, upon my family, I break that power of embargo. Every demonic embargo 
every wicked embargo that's come upon me. I renounce this. I reject your power. I break your grip over my life. Get out now. Get out now. Get out now. Get out now. In the name of Jesus, I take back my life. 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 In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration. Somebody declare, let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Financial restoration. Marriage restoration. Academic restoration. Health restoration. In this day of resurrection, let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus, this day I receive restoration with my document. Let there be restoration in the spirit realm. Let there be restoration in the physical realm. Let there be restoration. I walk in restoration. I walk in restoration. I move in restoration. I inherit restoration. Somebody speak up for yourself. Say, I walk in restoration. In the name of Jesus, I walk in weight. I walk in power. I walk in life. Everything the devil has stolen, I take it back. I take back my life. I take back my authority. I take back my key. My key of authority that the enemy has stolen. I take it back now. In the name of Jesus. I break the hands of the wicked ones. I shatter the hands, the tongues of the wicked ones. I cut down the tongues that is releasing curses over me and my family. I cut it down. I break chains. I break shackles. I break manacles. Wherever you are, receive life in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Receive life, man of God. Give me your palms. Receive life. Receive life. Somebody give me a palm. Give me a palm. Give me a palm. Give me a palm. Receive life. Receive, receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Hallelujah. Receive life. Command his hands to make way. Lord, release glory, release power, release oil. Receive new life, new life. Receive new life. Give me a pump, mama. Just give me a pump. Receive new life, receive new life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody worship him. Lord, we give you grace. We bring glory to you. We bring glory to you. Somebody worship him. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
this, Lord, by sin and shame don't count anymore. My sins and shame don't count anymore. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. My past don't count anymore. My errors don't count it anymore. Don't count anymore because of the blood, the Son of God, and the Calvary. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want to quickly share the grace. We have exceeded our time. But if you're here, please, I want to keep standing. If you're here, you have not received Jesus in your heart. I want to just help you. I did it many years ago. Don't be ashamed. I'm not going to call you out. But I just want you to raise up your hand wherever you are. If you know you don't want to receive Jesus into your heart, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. I want to quickly lead you in prayer. Wherever you're sitting, the Lord will touch you. I see a hand. Keep, you know, keep the hand. Keep it up so we will see you. I will see you. If you want to receive Jesus, wherever you are, I want to quickly do it now. If anybody want to receive Jesus, hallelujah. I, I, I see a hand before. If nobody, glory to God that everyone here, here have given their life to God. So Lord, I thank you for all your sons and daughters that have gathered in this resurrection Sunday. I pray today that you will not go back unresurrected. You are going back resurrected. Your finances resurrected. The marriage resurrected. Your academic endeavor resurrected. Everything about you, your calling, your, your, your gift and resurrected. Your spiritual life has resurrected. Everything in your life that has been buried in the last few years is now resurrected by this power of all trance. In Jesus' name, as you live here today, may his glory cover you, cover your friends, cover your family, and cover everything you will become. May your life not remain the same again. In the name of our mighty Jesus, we pray. And let it your shout. Amen.